All right, guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel and thanks for dropping by. In this session, I'm going to briefly touch on the text tools in Affinity Designer version 2 for iPad. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the tracking and kerning controls, where they're located and how you can use them. Um, Actually, this uh, was a question that was posed to me just the other day. Someone dropped by the channel, watched one of my videos, and they commented asking, hey, where the heck are the tracking and the kerning controls? I can't find them, and I've been looking for them for an hour. And this is completely understandable as they've just redesigned the entire user interface. So they've sort of tucked things away into areas that none of us are familiar with yet. And uh, finding these things can be a little bit frustrating, but once you know where to look, it 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 becomes second nature. So I'm going to show you guys uh, about that in just a second. But before we get into that, I want to show you something else that is actually super cool and super important. And I think it bears mentioning at the beginning of the video because it's very special. So let's check it out. Uh, what you see here is basically a stock photo that I altered. Uh, I downloaded this stock photo from the stock studio here. My search term was Neon City. Um, I love this kind of imagery. Um, I don't know why. It's the saturated colors and the glowing neon lights and things like that. I love to look at this kind of stuff. Uh, so if you uh, want later, do yourself a favor and search that in Pixabay. If you like that kind of stuff, there are tons of cool images of these uh, of this type. Anyhow, so I brought that in, but the colors are very bright already, and they're, uh, you know, I wanted something cool and dark so that my white text would pop off the screen for my video. Uh, and I, this was a video that I worked on um, after I started thinking about this text problem. So what I did was I brought a rectangle in with the shape tool, and I filled it with a purple and blue gradient. But then I changed the layer mode to hard light. Now, the first pretty cool thing that I want to show you is this. Uh, you, can, you can change the layer mode by going to the layer options here, but you can also, they added this really nifty swipe out that you can enter into, and it brings back that familiar menu that you can infinitely scroll through to find your layer modes. Now, I'm bringing this up specifically for the reason that just the other day, uh, Kate from Affinity published a video where she gives this incredible explanation and demonstration of all of these layer modes, all of them. And the reason that this is special is because, guys, this stuff is not easy to understand, but I watched her video and actually I've never heard anybody give such clear and simple explanations of this. Uh, so this video is a diamond. Uh, you need to go find it and you need to go watch it. This stuff is not easy to understand. It took me years to, you know, scrape it all together from articles on the internet. And even then, I may have only absorbed like 50% of it. But Kate's uh, presentation and uh, demonstration and explanation of this stuff is incredibly simple and easy to understand and it's a, a triumph of of uh you know the the tutorial genre just go check it out do yourself a favor save yourself years of pain and struggling i wanted to get that out there i'll link to it in the description okay all right so now that that's out of the way let's get to the text demo so what i'm going to do over here is grab my text tool Actually, we have our art text tool and our frame text tool. If you're new to Designer, the art text tool is really cool. You can basically uh, just drag out, you know, your text with your pencil or finger and try to get it to the, the size that you want. And then once you've got that established, you can type in with your keyboard the text that you want to have on the screen. Um, if you feel like you've made it too big or there's a problem, you can use these control handles to adjust the size a little bit, which is super, super duper handy. All right. Uh, personally, though, these days I use the frame text tool a lot as I'm always making some sort of chart or infographic for the students at school or for my boss or whoever. And um, I just use it a lot. So 
basically it does what it says, uh, what its name says it does. You 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 use your uh, finger or pencil and you draw out your frame, and then you can type text into it. And uh, what I'll do is I'll give us some text here. Um, this is how you track and kern in V2. Well, cool. Now, uh, the frame text tool is a little bit different from the artistic text tool in that you get this nifty little handle here if you want to resize it. The other handles are there for changing the dimensions of the frame. So now that we've got our text in place, I'm actually going to make it a little bit larger so we can see it clearly in the video. And then I'll tell you guys about where the tracking and kerning controls are. So basically, uh, we open up our text studio. And you see, it looks totally different from the old, uh, well, not totally different, but it it's a little bit unfamiliar, right? Um, where everything is tucked away, uh, the secret lies in these little arrows here over on the right. Um, so here's the path that you want to follow if you want to get to the tracking and kerning controls. Here, if you press this one, this one goes to the character tab. Once you're in here, things get a little more familiar. And then if you want to get to the tracking and kerning controls, you go through this one, positioning. And then here's where those tracking and kerning controls rest. So let's talk about tracking and kerning. Um, if I want to track a line of characters, let's track the word track. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and select this stuff. You can also do this by double tapping and dragging out a selection with the Apple Pencil, like so. Oops, sorry. Like this. Uh, either way you want to do it is uh, it's up to you, whichever you become more proficient or, uh, at or which is more convenient for you. But then you can adjust the tracking, which is the way, uh, you know, the spacing between all of the letters. And uh, you can input the values in three different ways. So you can use the plus and minus tools over here. You can input a new value directly by tapping that value. Or you can actually treat this like a slider, which is really great. Um, it gets a little, uh, if you're trying to increase the space, it gets a little tight up here, right? Uh, because you run out of room at the top of the screen. So the, the higher you get in this menu, the pro the, it's probably better to just go ahead and tap and enter a value, uh, approximation, um, you know, estimate a value. Maybe, uh, you want to really track those characters widely. You can enter the value like that. So that's how you track a, a group of characters. Now. Let's talk a little bit about kerning. Kerning uh, has to do with the individual character spacing. And I don't know if, for those of you who don't have a lot of experience with uh, designing fonts or anything like that, um, every font, every character in that font has its own very special and unique kern settings because, you know, the, the font designers are designing these fonts so that they can be easily read. Um, and it, this is an art form, guys. Uh, I don't have time to go into it. Even if I made a video every day for a year, I wouldn't have enough time to go into that topic. But basically, every font has, uh, every font character in the font, <laughs> every character in the font has its own kerning setting, right? Which makes it rest in a particular way between a particular character. So um, the kerning between the E and the R could be different between the kerning of the R and the G, for example. So if you want to kern characters, what you'll want to do is you want to come up here and you want to make sure that this is on kerning override. And that allows you to go in and adjust the kerning of the font uh, for this particular situation here between the E and the R, I want to increase the space between those two characters. For example, I can use my sliders and do that. But you don't select the characters with a selection like this. You just place your cursor behind the character that you want to kern. So I want to kern the R. I'm going to place my cursor behind the R and then I can kern it. And that's it, guys. That's how you get to the controls. One more time, I'll show you the path so you don't forget it. You come to the text studio. You tap here for the character tab, and then you go to positioning. And there you'll find your tools. 
So guys, um, I just thought that this was super useful and interesting. And I thought that um, some of you would really uh, want to know about this. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. You guys keep working hard, take care of yourselves, stay healthy and stay positive. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.